Hello, everyone. This is the Awkward Author blog slash podcast, and my name is Alyssa Grasso, and this is a weekly show I do talking about my awkward author life and, uh, yeah, seems especially awkward this past week. But anyway, so I, I had a goal to get more work done on my work in progress, which is a novella that I'm working on. And I, I got work done. Um, I'm up to like, I guess, 20, around 21,000 words, I think I'm at, um, which is good. I wanted to get to 25,000 words. That was my goal. I, you know, fell pretty far short of that, obviously. And, uh, oh god, it's like noisy out, so I'm sorry for all the noises, but, um, I really have no idea what's going on out there. Um, I did not make it to my 25,000 word goal, and, you know, part of it's just maybe, you know, that maybe was too ambitious a goal, and I, I didn't work as much as I could have, but, um, I, I don't like to make excuses, but certainly I'm going to, because I can, um... I just, I guess uh, this, over the weekend, I hope to get more done over the weekend, and I ended up getting, I'm, I'm still suffering from a little bit of a ear infection, sinus infection, which I'm kind of prone to these, I guess, but uh, this was pretty bad, and so like, I got like almost no sleep uh, Saturday night, and so I was pretty, like Sunday morning I was going to get work done, and it was just like not happening, like I could not like focus or anything, I was just like beat. Um, ended up like taking an hour long nap Sunday morning because that was like I'd only gotten like two or three hours of sleep the night before so um, I needed that so yeah um, I didn't get work done that on Sunday and I did work on Monday I did get a little work done on Monday but you know I had time I probably could have gotten more work done it's just I could not focus guys like uh, it was just I did not feel great and um you know I felt better I felt better certainly than I did like Saturday night when I couldn't sleep um but I didn't feel great and I still don't feel you know 100 percent I'm still uh still not quite out of the woods but uh yeah in fact like Sunday um well early Sunday morning like you know three o'clock Sunday morning when I woke up um like I just you know I was in pain like it was like um, this whole side of my face, like my ear and the side of my face, and it was like, oh my god, I'm dying. Um, so, so I got my phone, like I have nothing better to do, three in the morning, I'm like on my phone, unfortunately, like googling like what to do for, you know, sinus infection, ear infection, uh, that is the, the blessing and the curse, I guess, of our information age is, you know, information is always at our fingertips, um, but, uh, so, you know, I, I was looking up all different kinds of stuff, you know, finding all different solutions, and uh, one of the things was like, um, not so much an immediate solution, but uh, to stop this, you know, to prevent um, sinus infections, you know, recurring sinus infections, one thing you should do, and I, I think I've read this before, is to um, consume local honey, like local wildflower honey on a daily basis. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to start like, you know, right there at three in the morning. I'm like, oh, I've got to, uh, I've got to make honey a regular part of my routine. And so like my boyfriend was nice enough on Sunday to like drive me to a local apiary, which was a really cool place it turned out. Um, and so we could get some honey, but it's like, this is like, you know, when I'm up in the middle of the night and I can't sleep, it's like, I need to get honey. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's just, uh, yeah, that's what's been going on here, I guess. And then the other thing going on, which shouldn't really relate to writing, but everything relates to everything. I think um, I, I'm having like a weird situation with my neighbors. Uh, I, I told a longer story on my, my other channel, my plan, Alyssa channel, if you really want to find out all about my lovely neighbors, um, you can watch that video. I'm not going to tell the whole long story again, but basically these people are, are something else I rent. Um, it's a building that we have four apartments in it and you know, so these people rent too they moved in uh, the end of the year like December and they, they've, there's just been issues with them all along but they have three pit bulls which I guarantee you you know was, was not part of the original lease and uh, anyway they um, they aren't the most, I guess, careful dog owners, I would say. I mean, these dogs are not friendly. Um, they're definitely, you know, not well trained. And anyway, like, there was an incident 
which is not the first incident that's happened. Um, there was an incident like Friday afternoon where the dogs came at the door and came after me. Like I was just walking um, past our building. And uh, so, yeah, anyway, that was not fun. I mean, I'm fine, but I'm stressed out now. Like, like I am like stressed out to like go outside, to, like to leave the building and uh, that's not cool. And, and stress, well, it can make you sick. I don't think that's why I have a sinus infection, but it probably doesn't help. But uh, no, I'm just like, feel like I'm in like a stressed out state right now. And that makes it tough to get work done. And I don't know, um, you know, I, I have contacted my landlord and, and she was, she's on vacation, unfortunately this week, but um, she, she's on it. And, you know, she said to me in her email, like she regrets ever renting to these people. Like they totally misrepresented themselves when, you know, they're signing the lease. So, um, with any luck maybe she'll be able to evict them or something i don't know because it's just like huh, it's just craziness like i said there's like noise going on outside like they're like working on cars or something i i don't know i mean huh, i don't know eh. anyway i'm not gonna keep ranting i i ranted enough in my other video but just just noting that like stress doesn't always work well with creation and and that's something too i think you, you see this sometimes, I, I know, I, I've seen people say stuff like this on Twitter Twitter and stuff like that, like, you know, our political climate right now is, is not great. Like, these are some, you know, scary, sketchy times that we live in. And there's like this, I don't know, philosophy that like troubled times produce great art or something. And I don't entirely buy into that. Like, maybe in some cases that's true. But I think on a personal level, like if you're going through like a rough time, um, a stressful situation in any way, whether it's like, you know, um, something with your weird neighbors or it's, you know, money's tight or, you know, you're worried about losing your job or you, you know, don't have health care coverage or, you know, anything like that um, that can, you know, keep you up at night and make you worry about things. I don't think that is really conducive to creativity because you're, you're using part of your, you know, your, your mental capacity um, for things that aren't creating. So you don't have, um, you can't focus as well on creating stuff. Now, maybe you might get some great ideas from this and maybe once you get through that um, and things are good for you, you might be able to draw on those experiences um, in terms of creating work and creating characters and things like that. But I honestly don't uh, subscribe to the idea that that, you know, tough times and difficulty produces great, great art because I don't really think, um, from my experiences, I don't think that's true. Um, but I guess everybody, you know, has a different way of looking at things and dealing with things. So something to keep in mind. But yeah, just as I'm having this like crazy week, um, I do think of those of you who are going through tough times, those of you who have like chronic illness or or chronic pain and you're still able to you know create stuff and you know write or do whatever it is you do I mean I I'm really impressed guys I really am because I know how difficult that can be and uh, yeah you're my heroes really you are um, so anyway that's that's what's going on basically in my life this week and uh, yeah I'm just kind of cranky because I don't feel good um, yeah anyway uh it is a new month it is july as i make this video slash podcast and each month i do an author income report talking about um my author income or lack of income from the previous month so this is for june of 2018 which um wasn't a great month for me guys um have to say although part of that is really my own fault, I guess. Um, so I'll, I'll go into that, I guess. Um, so this month, in, in terms of sales, um, of book sales, okay, as usual, most of my money is coming from KDP, from Amazon's Kindle program, um, where I made a total of $82.82. Now, as I've said before, not all my books are available everywhere. They are all available on Kindle. I have a dog here, he's getting his, his head pet. Um, 
not all are all are available through Kindle, so it's always going to be the big money maker. Um, I have some books that are published under a pen name that are just you know informational things that um, is actually where the bulk of the money comes from, guys. Um, oh, and we just heard some dog jingling, and I think I just got a little dog slobber on me. Um, okay, so. Amazon Kindle is where most of the money came from, $82.82. And then after that is Create Space, which is um, Amazon's print book program, which is what I've used to um, publish the print books that I have out there. And from Create Space in June, um, I made $21.99. Uh, two of those were expanded distribution books, which um, which means you know, they're published by Create Space, but people bought them from elsewhere. I don't have the information from where they bought them because it doesn't tell me that, but two were expanded distribution sales. So it could have been um, through Baker and Taylor, like a library, could have been through um, another bookstore, um, who knows. Then this month I also did have earnings from Barnes and Noble. Okay, sorry guys, I got interrupted there. I had to go deal with some doggy drama. I really don't know what was going on, but anyway. Um, so Barnes and Noble, I made money from Barnes and Noble this month. And as I said, in a video a couple weeks ago. I don't remember how long ago. Um, Unnamed Roads actually got selected, I don't know how, um, by Barnes & Noble for their Nook Press Presents list for June and July. Um, so it was on, you know, like their Facebook page, on the website, in this list. Uh, you know, again, um, it's a cool thing. I had my doubts about, you know, whether or not this would generate any sales, but I did, um, I sold like a couple of copies through ebooks through Barnes and Noble, um, so that brought in six dollars and forty-eight cents, which is six dollars and forty-eight cents more than I've ever made um, on you know Barnes and Noble sales since uh, starting self-publishing. So um, I guess that's pretty cool. Um, I'll take it. Anyway, so my grand total. Oh, and I will say. I know, because I know someone who bought one, um, that there there probably will be a little more sales trickling in through that because I know someone who brought, bought, um, after that Nook Press thing, bought a, a print copy from Barnes & Noble. Um, and so that would be expanded distribution. And like I said, there were two expanded distribution sales, but they were both on my Etsy book um, in CreateSpace. So the expanded distribution sale for Unnamed Birds has not yet shown up in the create space account so i'll be looking for that um because <laughs> i know that, that did occur anyway so my total earnings um my total not earnings i guess is the wrong thing but my my total sales for the month of june from books were 111 dollars and 29 cents which isn't bad hey um that's money i will take it um, unfortunately, I spent more than that in advertising this month, and I will get into that. So, um, and the bulk of that was on Facebook, which I think generated absolutely no sales, and which is why I'm like, I, I am just not into Facebook ads, but I'll go through the list here. Facebook, okay. Um, I spent a total of $72.06 on Facebook ads. Um, this was both for Unnamed Roads and for um, my Etsy book. Now actually, the Etsy book ad, I think might have generated one or two sales. Um, I'm just trying to remember. I think it was, I think it might have been two sales from that ad. So in, in that sense, okay, there was something out of that I got out of it, but um, it's still not profitable because I spent $72.06 on ads. So um, there's that. And uh, I, I just, I don't know, guys. I cannot crack the Facebook code. I mean, I've read books, you know, I've studied a lot of stuff out there. And it just, I, I guess, you know, some of you figured out formulas that work. I mean, my problem too is I think, you know, the type of book I'm marketing maybe just does not work for Facebook. Um, that's that's my feeling on that. Um, so $72.06 on Facebook. I spent $50.59 on AMS ads. And some of those were ads that I wouldn't run again. I played around with, um, let me think, what are they called? They're called, they're the ads where you can target an interest without using keywords. Um, is it product display interest ads or whatever those ones were. Um, those got a lot of views and a lot of clicks, but 
no or almost no sales. I think I got like one sale um, from those and paid a lot more for them. Um, obviously, it is noisy outside. Okay. Um, but anyway, so those ads I will not be running again. But my other Facebook ads have generally been, pro or not Facebook, my other Amazon ads have generally been profitable. So, um, you know, I'm still tweaking those and refining those, trying to make them a little bit more profitable for me. So $50.59 on AMS ads, um, which again, wasn't totally profitable because of those other ads um, that I was running, but um, I guess that was a good learning experience. And then finally, I spent $5.86 on BookBub ads. Um, there were a couple of different, well, there are several different ads that I ran on BookBub trying to you know figure out stuff that works there. Um, was that profitable? I'm not entirely sure. Um, I, I think I might generate a couple of sales through BookBub ads, um, depending on which books they were. So I feel like, yeah, maybe, maybe those were profitable. I mean, $5.86, it wasn't too much money that was spent. But anyway, if you add up all the money I spent on ads this month, um, it comes to $128.51, which is actually more than what um, the income that came in for my books. So I'm actually at a loss of $17.22 for the month of June. So not a great month, guys. Okay, sorry about that, guys. That was uh, another interruption for some doggy drama as my dog was barking at the neighbors outside. So anyway, June was not a profitable month, but I did just want to be transparent and share that with you and just, you know, share with you all the ups and downs and all that I'm trying to figure out and learn um, as I work on this, you know, building an, an author life, an indie author life. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the unvarnished truth, guys. Um, anyway, I am going to be signing off. I got some stuff I got to do today, um, even though I'm not feeling 100%, but uh, I got some chores I, chores I got to get done. Um, this is actually July 4th, I just realized, as you'll be watching this. So for those of you that are here in the U.S., um, happy 4th of July to you. Uh, have fun. Celebrate responsibly. Um, but have a good time, guys. And uh, yeah, I will be back next week um with a new video slash podcast i do thank you for watching if you want to learn more about me um please check out my website which is alissagrasso.com that's a-l-i-s-s-a-g-r-o-s-s-o.com and uh yeah see you guys talk to you guys all again soon uh keep it awkward